Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontrar la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello fellow travelers and welcome to this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. I am your host Barry Kessler and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination in the entire world. Maybe it's even yours and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music that you're listening to is performed by Alberto Perez and he's the owner of the Lapa Lapa, the El Dorado restaurant and at night for dinner the El Dorado transforms into the Vista Grill. And that's the Vista Grill that used to be up on the hill. Well, it's now got a new Vista right on Los Muertos Beach in the Romantic Zone on the south side with a dramatic view of the Los Muertos Pier all lit up at night with just the most beautiful colors. And you'll be able to dine on the same Vista Grill menu, receive the same fantastic Vista Grill service, now, of course, at La Palapa, you can enjoy breakfast, lunch, or dinner with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It's just so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. So, let's see what's happening this week, the 8th of August, 2017. A Jalisco municipality has decided to fight noise pollution. And if you've ever spent time in a real Mexican neighborhood like I have, you may have noticed that they can get kind of noisy, kind of at just about any hour of the day or night. In fact, you could be sleeping soundly at like 3.30 in the morning when all of a sudden, out of the blue, Banda music comes blaring through your open window. And it's it's not like, oops, oh, I turned my stereo knob, you know, it was way up by, by accident. Oh, no, 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 my friends. It's more like the knob is like turned all the way high and it's kind of like stuck there, you know? <laughs> it's, like, it's no mistake, kids. Uh, then that party um, just keeps on going and going and going until about, I don't know, five in the morning or whenever everybody gets tired. I mean, there's wedding celebrations, there's quinceañeras, there's birthdays and Groundhog Day and Mother's Day, you name it. It can get really loud. So a state lawmaker in Jalisco is actually attempting to pass anti-noise legislation. And here's an article written in Mexico News Daily, and it goes like this. An anti-noise campaign that began in June in Zapopan, Jalisco, has so far resulted in the permanent closure of 35 businesses that exceeded noise limits established by the municipality. Another nine have been fined, as well as the owner of a noisy house. The administration of Mayor Lu, uh, Jesus Pablo Limos Navarro reports that given the number of commercial establishments located in the neighborhood of Chapalita, that part of the city is by far the worst in terms of noise pollution. Not only are the noise emissions of commercial establishments more tightly regulated now, but the mayor has announced that his administration will attempt to regulate the use of fireworks in religious and private celebrations and uh, which, of course, is another major uh, contributor to excessive noise. Well, <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if this actually becomes a trend in Mexico. I don't know. I'd kind of miss the charm of that boombox blasting the favorite tunes of my next-door neighbor at one in the morning. I mean, you know, 
He's not doing that for himself, right? I mean, he's doing that for me. So, so I can hear that fantastic music and, and see what great taste he has in music, right? <laughs> I mean, I should be thanking him for the pleasure and the honor of being exposed to his favorite beat at one in the morning, right? <laughs> Fantastico. Gracias. Well, vamos a ver. We'll see. I have a link to the article in the show notes of this episode, episode 31 of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. All right, now, back in February, I had an interview with author Howard Johns, who was writing a book called The True Story About the Making of the Night of the Iguana. And we talked about his upcoming book, and lo and behold, the book came out this week. So let's just slide back a couple of months, go back and listen to what Howard had to say about his book. What was your path to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico? Well, I don't want to dish the dirt on, on my life. I want to talk about others. But <laughs> seriously, I was coming down here for, wow, 15 years. You know, I came down to Puerto Vallarta for the first time in the year 2000. And I fell in love with the place. I was here literally a day, you know. Yeah. And I said, wow, this is where I want to live. Seriously. You know, it some places you go to, they, they have that magical effect on you. And this was like somebody, you know, kissed me, you know, it was like, wow. <laughs> and I came back again. And every time I came back, I stayed longer and longer. So it turned into a love affair. And eventually I moved here. But I had written two books mm -hmm. before. And anybody listening from Palm Springs, I say hi <laughs> to my friends from Palm Springs in the desert because I wrote Palm Springs Confidential oh. there, which was a big hit. It was a best selling book. And that sold out through, I think, three printings. It was a, a really uh, important book, too, especially for real estate agents and uh, homeowners because it identified the history of the homes people were buying and selling. Up till that time, most of it was hearsay, you know. Mm -hmm. I went into the actual history of the homes, and I researched the, the title deeds and everything uh, to make sure that um, – what realtors were doing was actually correct. They were identifying the history and putting the names of Marilyn Monroe on these houses and Elvis Presley lived here and someone else slept there. And I set out to authenticate all that, and I did. But in the course of all that, I, I had to divulge the dirt, a little bit of the dirt, uh -huh. right? And that's where the, the scandal came in, and I got a reputation for that, oh. which, which goes both ways. Some people like it, and some people say, you know, you're a naughty boy. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, you, you're giving away the secrets. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is also kind of what this new book's about. I don't give away the addresses necessarily, but I do tell you where the bodies are buried, or at least some of the bodies, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's what intrigued me about coming to Puerto Vallarta because everybody comes here, even if it's an unconscious association with the Night of the Iguana, everybody's heard of the movie. A lot of people saw the movie and the whole... Um, excitement surrounding the making of the movie. And you had Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton and John Huston creating history here. It's become the stuff of urban legend. It's, it's really uh, entered the history books. And yet, Barry, it's funny, there's never been a book written about the making of the movie. All right. So now the book is here. And if you'd like to buy a copy, you can go to my website, You'll find the link to order his book, or you can go back to the February 26th podcast and listen to the entire interview and read the show notes, and then buy the book. Anyway, go to portofartertravelshow.com, episode 31, look in my show notes for the links, and you will find a way to buy the book. Now, I received an email from listener Jeff Bassett, and he told me that he liked the show. But he also told me that he was in the travel industry as a side job and that he was going to be heading to Puerto Vallarta in the low season during the hot and humid weather uh, of the month of July. And so, as you know, if you've listened to my show, um, it's pretty hot during the summer months here in Puerto Vallarta. In fact, from June 15th until about October 15th, it's 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 hot, it's humid, and it's the rainy season. And so anyway, I invited Jeff to come on the show and tell us what he and his wife did in the summer heat during the low season in paradise. So 
let's go to Colorado Springs, Colorado, where I sent my microphone, and talk with my buddy, Jeff Bassett. Hey, hey, Jeff, how you doing today? I'm doing great, and thanks, Barry. I'm glad you asked me to join you today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, um, I wanted to get your take on Puerto Vallarta because you are in the travel industry. Tell my listeners a little bit about yourself and what your path was to Puerto Vallarta. Oh, okay. Well, um, you know, I've been in the travel industry for about five years. It actually started as a uh, kind of a side hustle, uh, my primary job being a claim adjuster. Um, but I was looking for something to kind of merge into retirement down the road and um, that I could do full time uh-huh. and uh, kind of fuel my love for travel and, you know, give me an opportunity to share that with, you know, other people too. Um, so I started some foot travel several years ago after taking a cruise and just falling in love with uh, cruising. It was completely relaxing after sitting at a claims desk for months on end. <laughs> I imagine. Uh, it was a completely different world. So, you know, I just loved it. And my next cruise after that first cruise, though, after I started the agency, was a um, carnival cruise that overnighted in Puerto Vallarta. And that was really my first experience in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, we took the um, first day there. We just bought the cheap shopping cruise mm-hmm. that took us around the city uh, to a bunch of different vendors, markets, uh, the Malacan, um the main church, Guadalupe, and um, did some sightseeing there. Had my first Paloma um, on that tour, but it just gave, gave us a, a great chance. All right, to, all right. Tell everybody what a Paloma is. Oh, that's. Um, I was told it was the uh, the true Mexican margarita. It's just a little ice, um, some tequila, and the soft drink squirt with a little salt <laughs> on the rim. That's those are pretty good. <laughs> Okay. All right. But we know yeah. better. We know better. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's supposed to be the real thing. So I told the girl at the airport that that's what I was uh, buying the tequila for to make Palomas and she just cracked up. Oh, okay. I get it. All right. That's a, yeah, that's a joke. All right, you guys. Well, I don't know if it was a joke. She just, I, I don't think most people buy, buy the tequila to make Palomas. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we got a chance to look around and really loved it. Um, since it was an overnight, we, got out there on our own and just wandered around and took the buses, um, checked out the area and said, man, this is awesome. We want to come back. So uh, this was on a cruise and the cruise stayed for like more than just um, 24, what was it, just for 24 hours or how long did it stay? I think it got in at probably about eight in the morning and then left about probably two or three o'clock the next day. Oh, okay. So you had like a day and a half there. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of fun. Um, I've looked now, there's a couple um, cruise lines that are doing that this year they're not doing it uh every cruise but uh every few cruises they are stopping and doing an overnight i think princess is doing that carnival's doing that and i think one other so it's getting a lot more exposure down there to Puerto Vallarta on the cruise ships that's a great way to try a new area um and that's kind of like what i like to do is go out and spend a day in port check out an area and decide if i want to come back and uh, Puerto Vallarta is definitely one of the ones I decided I wanted to come back to. In fact, it's been the uh, uh, probably the place that I've been back to the most uh, since visiting on a cruise. Okay, so when you went back, then where did um, where did you stay? Uh, the second time I came out, we um, stayed up in Riviera Nayarit at Matlali Resort. It's um, now Serena's Hotels, Matlali, uh, but it was right before it changed to all inclusive. Stayed a couple of nights there, checked out the beach, the little town. I cannot not pronounce the name. Um, You're talking about Busarias? Uh, not not Busarias. No, no, not Busarias. Oh. It's um, uh, Juana Castelli. <laughs> Juana Quatzle. Okay. Juana Quatzle, yes, yes. Okay, I was, I was the way Juana off. Juana Yeah, no, it's all right. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's a hard one. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great little town. Um, and then we um, came in and spent the uh, the rest of our stay down at the north end of Malacan at Hotel Rosita. Um, ah. you know, I, I like the area so much. I did a little research and uh, uh, you know wanted to find a local hotel rather than a resort so I can kind of experience Puerto Vallarta rather than uh, rather than being, the, the, the being resor- a resort the whole time. Yeah, and get out and eat the local food and, and you know and, and see what it's about. And that was in December, and uh, we. We didn't know, but we discovered they had that uh, the festival de Guadalupe uh, uh, going on. Yeah, and we were there at the last night when the Hotel Rosita took part in their procession. 
Uh, so we, as a guest, we were invited to go and it was just so much fun. We walked with the procession, the food vendors, um, you know, all the entertainment that was going on. It, you know, it was a great time and a great place to stay. Wow. All right. So that celebration then takes place over a period of time and, and you just happen to be there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Just have to be there. It always ends on December 12th. Um, and it, it's a great time. All right. So that that's interesting. You went from a resort to like the oldest hotel in Puerto Vallarta right there, the Rosita. So mm -hmm. tell, tell us about the accommodations at the Rosita. Well, we um, actually, when I first went in there, we, we requested an ocean view room and they gave us a street view room. And it was kind of small and kind of um, real basic. So I went back and had them change it and they gave us a really huge room. But what we noticed there for a, a small old hotel, um, and we didn't know what we were getting into when we went out there. Um, it was very clean. Uh, people were super friendly. Uh, it was nice that, you know, the beds were comfortable. Um, it was old by, by no means is it a four star or, or, you know, even a, a strong three star, but it is just a really nice, friendly local hotel. Um, I think probably great for families and, and couples traveling that want to be on the beach and at the Malacon and right where the, where the, um, I think more of the real action is, um, you know, the local population there being in El Centro. I agree. But, yeah, it's a great yeah. spot. But some great views and great pictures you can get from the, the balconies there at Hotel Rosita. Um, you know, and but the staff is super friendly. I really like that. And they get a little restaurant in there that puts on these buffets on Sunday mornings that are just awesome. Um, very traditional Mexican food, um, very inexpensive. Right. And, you, and know, you don't have to be staying there to... Um, to enjoy that, you can you can go in there and pay for that. And if you want to, exactly. if you want to, to check it out, uh, exactly. you just happen to be staying there. Um, were there any were there refrigerators in the rooms? Uh, yes, there was a little refrigerator in the room. Um, TV channels, mostly mostly Spanish language. A um, couple of American. They didn't come in. It looks like they were just retrofitting some of the rooms. Okay. Um, last time we were there. And um, and what was the uh, you were there during high season, right in December time. So what was it priced per uh, night? Do you remember? Oh, per night for the ocean views, I think they were running about 129, 139 a okay. night. Okay. Very good. Which was, wasn't too bad. It comes to two beds in the room, um, you know, on the balcony. So that's fairly reasonable. Yeah. It's a, it's in a great part of town, you guys. Um, it's right at the very North end of the Malacan and it's, um, you know, it's in a great neighborhood, so um, definitely worth worth a, a check out. Uh, but during yeah, during high season, you know, you're going to look at those rooms, and they are going to be about 120. But probably in the low season, you can maybe pick them up for 80 bucks or 85 bucks or or, or something like that. Were they air conditioned, uh, Jeff? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. Okay, cool. All right, well definitely that's that's the yeah. Rosita, Hotel Rosita. Cool. All right. Yeah, you know, we just like the area. You could just, you know, walk out the door and you're right on the Malacan um, and go up the street. And we've got a Woolworths there in Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. Who would have expected that? <laughs> yeah, they, well, listen, they got a Costco too, for goodness sake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So you stayed there just for a couple of nights. Did you ever go back? Yeah, we went back uh, the following year uh, for the same period just because of the festival and the time of year. Uh, we brought some friends that time. So um, just kind of you know, part of my sharing and we, um, my adventure. So I drug some people down with us and they had a blast now. And, um, now they want to go back with us again. All right. We're, uh, were, were they okay? Were you, you feel okay taking them back? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, you know, yeah, listen, yeah, I'd have to yeah, edit no, that no. out. Otherwise, you know that. Okay. No, they, they were good. He was, he was a little worried. She and my wife were going to take off down the Malacan in the middle of the night and have some fun. But, <laughs> um, so there was a lot going on. It, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, one thing I noticed down there is, it, you know, the culture is different than here. We roll up our sidewalks, you know, about eight, nine o'clock and, and down there, that's when things just start getting hopping. Yeah. Um, you know, it seems like everybody eats dinner late and then the families come out and the families are out there, you know, um, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, going up and down the Malacan, and uh, you know, so it's a lot of fun. Um, and, and the nights are great; it's comfortable weather, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Now you stayed a couple times at uh, Rosita. Have you where else? Uh, where else have you stayed? 
And well, just recently I came down uh, to try Puerto Vallarta in the summer. Oh yeah, and, now that's why that's why I have you here. You know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, I want to know about. We all want to know about Puerto Vallarta in the summer, Jeff. So, where'd you stay? Uh, we stayed at the Los Arcos Suites. It's part of um, the Playa Los Arcos Hotel, um, the hotel on the south end in Zona Romanica, um, right on the beach. And then they have two other smaller boutique style hotels up behind them. One's the Los Arcos Suites and the other is uh, Donna Susana Suites. And we stayed at the Los Arcos Suites, uh, which was a, a small four-story hotel with a pool and a courtyard in the center um, off the street, um, but just a you know block away from the beach. Mm-hmm. Um, so we thought it would be kind of comfortable. And, and I like the smaller hotels and more intimate atmosphere. The um, the summer though um, wasn't as bad as I might have feared. Uh, my wife doesn't do as well in the heat, so she <laughs> she really enjoyed the air conditioning in the room. Um, but yeah, the humidity was higher than the temperature, and I think I think that's what just really made it more challenging. Uh, I think it was about 85 degrees, and uh, according to my weather app, about 86, 87 percent humidity. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so you know, certain certain times of the day, you you really don't want to go out, and it's really a, a core period, like noon to four, where it, you know, it seems really bad. And that's a great time to jump in the pool or um, enjoy the air conditioning. Okay. So did your, um, did the suites have a pool area? Yes, they did. It had, it's a kind of a courtyard area. Uh, most of the rooms opened up to the pool in the center. Uh, so it was a nice little pool down there. Uh, the first uh, day we were there, it poured in the afternoon. I mean, uh, a real, I know that's the rainy season yeah. in Puerto Vallarta. So we, we got a, quite a bit of rain as I just jumped in the pool. And I had so much fun in there. Um, you know, the water was warmer or as warm as the pool water coming down out of the sky. And it, it was it was just so much fun swimming in the rain. Well, yeah. How cool is that? That is pretty cool. So That is pretty cool. You can't now, do that here in Colorado. Uh, no, you can't. Um, now, I understand that you can share, uh, you, you get pool um, privileges for the other, you get, you get to use the Los Arcos pool too and... Correct. You stay in any one of the three hotels and you have access to all three. Uh, the Donna Susana Suites across the street, a little, um, a little bit different um, than where we were at. It's more of a, uh, the rooms I looked at, peeked in a couple of them. They're more like um, standard hotel rooms, mm-hmm. but they got this um, really nice uh, rooftop pool, uh, which was real enjoyable. You can kind of swim, cool off. Um, it's more of a, a adult waiting pool, I guess you'd call it. Okay. Uh, but, but you can get some views of the ocean and, and, you know, parts of the area up there in the pool. Los Arcos Suites is is more, um, I think, family oriented. The suites are huge. Um, they, they have little kitchenettes in there, everything but a stove. I mean, but an oven. They uh-huh. did have a stove, refrigerator, um, hide a bed, an extra couch. So, you know, I, we could have brought, uh, you know, four or five kids with us and we would have been comfortable in there. And then uh, across the street at the Playa Los Arcos, that's where the restaurant is. They have the spa. Um, several pools, I think three pools, um, right out front in their courtyard. And, uh, we have, you know, access to the spa and the pools there. And then there's an all inclusive option you can purchase where it also gives you three buffet meals and, uh, drinks hmm. every day. Oh, okay. Now, um, you have that all inclusive option then at the suites as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, and now the Los Arcos Hotel, as I recall, because I was there the first time I went there, was kind of, did you get a chance to look in any of the rooms and see if they've redesigned them? Because as I remember them, most of them, except for the ones that were on the ends overlooking the ocean, were kind of regular hotel rooms, real simple, real standard. Yeah, I did not get a chance to look into those rooms. Uh, That was one of my goals there, and we just got caught up doing other things yeah. in Puerto Vallarta. And I, I was uh, actually going to get a tour because um, I wanted to see about maybe bringing a group down next year. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Start a, I got a, um, a lot of people talked about it. I tell, tell everybody about Puerto Vallarta, and they, they hear about people retiring down there or snowboarding down there, and they'd like to go. So I thought about bringing, trying to put together a group to come down and uh, you know take a look at it and maybe meet some of the people down there. But So I didn't get a chance to really look at the, the rooms in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, from what I've seen and from what I understand, they are they're more more of a traditional hotel room as opposed to Los Arcos Suites. Okay. 
All right, good. And uh, how was the restaurant there? It wasn't bad. It was a um, buffet, and um, you know, I, I rarely rave about buffets. Um, right. And so I, I, I don't know if I could rave about this one either. It was very traditional food, but it was good. Okay. Um, the um, they also have a full menu, and uh, it seems that the restaurant there caters to several of the other little restaurants, kind of on the periphery of the building too. Um, and so they do a very good job. We ate there actually last year when we were there at the restaurant, and it was a very good meal. Um, but you know, we come down there for the food, so we didn't want to. We wanted the buffet mainly for when we're hungry and just want to grab something to eat and then run out. But we wanted to experience some of the restaurants. Um, in Puerto Vallarta, and since we were staying on the south side of town this time, there's a whole bunch of restaurants down there that we've uh, never tried and um, wanted to get a chance to try at least a couple of them while we were there. Cool. So um, tell them, tell us what you did while you were down there. Yeah. Well, um, I think one of the highlights is we went fishing in the bay, um, went down to Ms. Mayola and contracted with uh, Adrian Pena to go out for morning uh, fishing. We took the bus, which is a blast uh, taking the buses in Puerto Vallarta. We took the bus out to um, you went Mismalo, to Mismalo, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, to the Barcelo entrance there and walked down to the beach, uh, met up with Adrian and a uh, great guy. He, he's local, uh, took us around, told us about his family and you know, told us a little bit about the culture. Um, tried really hard to catch a fish. Uh, we did not catch one. <laughs> my wife's First time on a little tiny boat, she was really nervous at first, but once we got out there, she was grinning ear to ear. Uh. Um, but he took us, you know, made sure that we, you know, we made the best of our time. He, t- he took us out to show us some of the beaches south of there, uh-huh. not quite to Yalapa, but uh, some of the others out there. And, uh, you know, we got to see a manta ray jump out of the water, pretty huge manta rays. Uh. Um, some of the sea turtles out there and some more of the tropical fish were coming up and and uh, just kind of give us an overview of the area. We went north um, and um, took a look at the, you know, the bay and, uh, you know, heard, heard a few stories about the area. And uh, it was a great time out there. So, so, uh, so he spoke English pretty well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Adrian spoke English very well. He's, he's still working on it, but uh, he's one of the better English speakers I've, I've encountered for, you know, a, a tour guide. Yeah. Out there. And, and, and could you tell me how much he charged you for the day out? Yeah, it was um, one sixty for four hours. One sixty for four hours. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. And let's see here. So you didn't catch any fish. No, we really wanted to. I asked him. You know, what are, I've never been ocean fishing. I asked him, "What do we do if we catch one?" And he said, uh, "Well, we can cook it on the beach, or you can ship it home. And cheapest way to do it is cook it on the beach." So <laughs> yeah. That's what we were hoping for. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what else did you do? Oh, we uh, did a lot of bus riding. I got the buses down finally. Oh, good for you. Uh, been been back and forth on them um, several times. Every time we're there, we try to you know stay local. Um, but occasionally we get the wrong bus. Um, learned that the key thing I learned um, is you got to watch out for that little sign that they flip over. It says tunnel on one side and central on the other. Yep. If you, if you want to go to central or someplace down that area, make sure it says central. Otherwise, you're gonna if it says tunnel, you're gonna end up towards Walmart. Um, so learn that one, um, had to jump off and get back, <laughs> but yeah, you just follow the, um, the names of the locations on the bus, the stops it makes and look at the top one, which is the key, the, the key destination. And you can figure out where you want to go. And it's so inexpensive. And, um, the people on the bus are, you know, unlike some other major cities are just really nice and friendly and Helpful, all that other helpful. good stuff. Yeah, it's amazing. Helpful, exactly. Uh, yeah, they'll, you know, if, if they think that you're in the wrong neighborhood, they'll look at you and they say, excuse me, are you are you, are you lost? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, everything's okay. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, Last time I was there, I was, I was in my, had my knee brace on and um, got on the bus and, and this older lady just wants to get up and move and wants me to sit down. I'm like, uh, you know, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm good standing, but, you know, it, <laughs> It's, um, yeah, yeah. People are very respectful, very nice, um, and helpful there. Let's see. What else did I do? I got a haircut down there. I found, uh, first time I went down there, found this, uh, barbershop, um, just up the road from Hotel Rosita, La Barberia. Okay. And, uh, I think they've grown, they, they had just opened when I was there 
and I think they've got, they've got three locations now, one in the hotel zone and one in Zona Romanica. And uh, I've never had a haircut like that before. You know, I've always been kind of. Uh, well, what do you mean you've never? What do you mean you've never had a haircut like that before? Well, you know, I always grew up in, uh, or I grew up in California and Arizona, and I was always been kind of a wash and wear kind of jump in the pool and you know comb my hair and off I go. Um, and you know, so I, I just you know go to supercuts or whatever, you yeah. know, get a haircut. Okay. And and um, you know those type of things. And I finally after so many years decided to grow a little beard and um, it's my first beard. It was growing out a little bit and I knew I needed to get it trimmed and, and shaped up. And so I stopped in this place and uh, I must've spent two hours in the chair. Um, the guy <laughs> really, I mean, he got the hot towel treatment, uh, the cold towel treatment, uh, the straight edge razor, razor shave, um, uh, everything. It, it, it was a, it wasn't a haircut. It was a grooming. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. I expected a, Pay at least what I, I I pay to you know get my uh, dog groomed <laughs> yeah. after all that. But it, it was it was two hundred thirty pesos, which is like about twelve dollars. Yeah, and and it was you know not, it was an experience, but, but it came out of there. And you know I walked back to Hotel Rosita. My wife sitting in the lobby waiting for me, and she saw me and just grinned ear to ear again. Um, <laughs> you know, I, the first time she said she, I was groomed, and so. <laughs> You know, if I'd probably go back there every six weeks if you know I could afford the air. If you could, yeah, why not? So wow, so you, so that was a real treat for you. Okay, so if you've got two hours, you guys to yeah, to burn. Yeah. I know why the ladies like to go to the salons now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You'll never, it'll never be the same for you. You're ruined, dude. Totally ruined. Yeah, and you, you walk in there, they'll, they'll give you, a, you know, a bottle of water or a, a Pacifico while you're waiting or while you're getting your haircut. Nice. Yeah, that's oh, really cool. That is not like at home. No, not at all. <laughs> I, I, I tried to duplicate that afterwards. Came up here and uh, uh, it's one guy um, shop that just opened up here. He wanted forty five dollars, and I didn't get half the haircut. Ah, no, just save your money. Go just yeah, save your money. And go exactly. back down there. Exactly. All right, that's how that's done. How, how much is airfare um, from where you is to there right now? What's that, what's uh, round trip? Usually about three fifty. Okay. Yeah, so it's not too bad coming out of uh, Denver. Fly out of Denver. That's not, Southwest. That's not bad at all. Okay, good. No. Yeah, because I'm paying around, I'm paying close to three hundred, somewhere between two seventy five and three hundred dollars. So yeah, out of L.A. All right, what else did you do? Oh well, we wandered around a lot. I um, thought there'd be more people uh, out there, um, or actually, I thought there would be more locals out there tours. But there were actually quite a few. It looks like North Americans and uh, maybe some Europeans out there tours. Uh, kind of surprised me. Uh, really? Just wandering around. Um, you know, a lot of um, you know, I saw a meme on Facebook page that there's uh, no longer a high season or a low season. It's either the uh, high season or the hot season. Mm-hmm. Uh, the beaches are crowded. Um, and they weren't that crowded, but there are, were a lot more people I expected um, out there in, in the summer. So I was kind of surprised. Um, but we went out and ate. We found a few good restaurants. One you recommended. And in fact, there's a podcast, I think your last podcast, uh, Fernando at Chinados. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Chinando. Uh, Chinando. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that place was awesome. That was one of the uh, best restaurants uh, me- or restaurant meals I've had. Ah, cool. Uh, Good. Yeah, he was a really great guy. His kids were, you know, waiting the tables. He was waiting the tables, too. Um, you know, real, real attentive. Uh, but the food it was really the highlight. It, it was awesome. I, uh, what'd you I'm get? Not a big, what, what'd you get? Well, I'm not a big seafood eater, and I'd been eating seafood all week, so I got the pepper steak. Uh, uh, oh, good. Came with asparagus and baked potato. And, you know, that was one of the best steaks I've ever had. Um, just the flavoring, it, it was cooked well. It was super tender. Um, it was awesome. My wife had the uh, fruit of the sea, like a seafood bowl. Uh-huh. You know, with shrimp, shrimp, octopus, and 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 fish and other seafood, and um, she loved it too. She, in fact, she she said we should have went there the first night so we could go back every night and try everything on the menu. <laughs> all right, good. All right, good call. All right, well, where yeah. where else did you eat? Um, it's a little restaurant right after we were done fishing. Um, they have, of course, the restaurant on the beach, but if you go back up to the road, there's a little restaurant. I think it's Jacinto. Oh, oh, I know the one you're talking about. Um, yeah. El El Jacalito. 
Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had a picture of it with the name. I, I, <laughs> um, we, you know, j- just a, a lunch there and, and seafood. And, um, you know, so if we didn't catch any fish, we thought we'd have lunch there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was great. Um, another good restaurant. Great food. Um, Tell, that that food. was a great place. That's a that place. You guys is right off the road. Um, it's right next to the the Barcelo, the uh, which used to be the La Jolla de Mismaloya. And uh, anyway, if it's just right to the left, just a little bit south of the Barcelo, and it's a roadside shack, and um, they have a jukebox, and they got tables set up there, and the food will knock your socks off. What'd you eat there? I had the um, coconut mango shrimp. Um, ah. Adrian said that was real good, so I thought I'd give that a try, and it was. It was awesome. I usually don't like the uh, mango sauces that well, uh, but this one was really good. And uh, I, I had the mango shrimp. My wife had the lobster, uh, which she she just ate, ate up. She loved it. Um, but you know, it was great, great location. Um, again, it was and good margaritas, good margies there too. Mm, yeah, I, I went with my Pacifico again, but. Uh. All right. Well, there you go. That's all right. Pacific That's Coast just fine. It's all right. You probably did better that way. Uh, if you do go there, boys and girls, wear bug spray on your legs because the noceums are there. They are there. So be careful. In fact, yeah, Ms. Maloya, yeah, sure. Ms. Maloya is, is well known for that. So make sure that you spray up before you go there. Did you run into any noceums while you were down there? No, not really. Um, you know, we, at the restaurant or out to the beach on the water. We got to the beach really early, so I don't think there was much activity. Mm-hmm. Um, a, oh, lot of, a lot of beach dogs running around playing in the water. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a neat place down there. Yeah. It, it's really nice. Yeah. I, you know, I, that's the kind of restaurants I like to try too. These little roadside um, shacks, as you said, it's, it's, you know, real homemade food and it's good. Yeah. And El Jacalito's got a, um, they got a jukebox there that plays some great, great banda music and they got some great ranchero music in there i just give i just give the waiter the money and i say here you pick there you go they, they there do you better go. than me because i have no clue yeah that actually helped us find it adrian told us about it but he said go across the bridge we weren't sure if it was another the little foot bridges going across there or, or the the road bridge yeah. but we got up to the road and we could hear the music and that's got to be right there yep and yeah, it's a cool jukebox. It looks like a giant iPhone. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. So, um, all right, cool. So you took the bus down there, obviously. Yes. All right, all right. Yeah, that was, you know, that was um, a little interesting because we we took it. That it was before dark, before light. It was still dark when we got on, and um, bus driver hitting some of those turns. Kind of, you can see everybody's leaning one way or the other, and you can't see if you're near a cliff or not. So you kind of wonder. <laughs> you just hold coming on. back just hold on tight. An, yeah exactly <laughs> coming back though we we could um you know see everything it was great views saw some uh other resorts up there and some awesome views of the bay um, oh, yeah. coming back and, and there were no real cliffs to fall off on so it was fine yeah um yeah so the, that, the bus that, was that bus loads up too you know you never think about that when you're headed back and you think, oh, okay, we're okay. And then that, it just stops and stops and stops and picks up people. And they're get, you know, they're getting, they're they're picking up people from the hotels and from the condos, and they're heading home. And that bus, that late bus that you're talking about, there, it, it gets packed. It's amazing. Yeah, it does. It does. It, and yeah, it stops um, on a regular basis out there. I was surprised. You know, I thought it might have been more of an express type bus, but at 50 cents, um, definitely a bargain. Can't beat it. Things about seven or eight pesos. You definitely can't beat it. And it's a good thing that they have, uh, occasionally have those uh, speed bumps or you you might lose a few buses over a cliff every once in a while. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I kind of surmise that the speed bumps are mainly where the bus stops or crossings are for people. (laughs) Yes, they are. (laughs) Um, I think in, in Belize, they call them silent policemen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They're definitely needed, that's for sure. What else did you do there while you were there well, during the summer heat? Let's see. I searched for um, anti-itch medication. Um, which, <laughs> well, which okay. Was, Why is that? Which was, well, I did get some uh, 
bites down by the beach down there in um, in, in um, Zona Romanica. Oh. Um, both of his ankles and, you know, calves a little bit and uh, had some itch. And we brought the bug spray with us, but we didn't bring the anti-itch. Mm-hmm. Or we, we brought some, but deemed we needed a little more. Yeah. And it just uh, it didn't seem common. Um, we went to several pharmacies and um, even went to the Walmart there. And found the name. It's no, you know, say no Picar, not no itch. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they kind of knew what you're talking about, but couldn't find it on the shelf. The pharmacists um, were recommending, you know, antibiotic creams and, you know, a little language issue, but uh, couldn't find it. Finally found a, um, in a bottle of after the bite at one of the pharmacies, which uh, seemed to work. But I, I thought there'd be a wider variety of, especially in the tourist areas of anti, anti itch. Yeah. But you know what, what's, what's fun about that is that, you know, you, you're looking for something like that and you're getting out there and you're interacting with people. You're starting to ask questions and, and talking to people, the pharmacist, somebody in the store, um, the greeter at Walmart was, was off, awesomely helpful. Um, and, and, you know, you start conversations that way and, and, and you're on a hunt like that. Um, it's, it's kind of fun because you, you get, you go to places you wouldn't expect and see and meet people you wouldn't normally do as a tourist. Um, you know, so if you're probably it's a good idea to put together a scavenger hunt before you go down, if you really want to learn about the local community. Yeah. It's um, a good idea to get out there and do that. Yeah. So did uh, you, did you, when, when you were down there, did you take taxis? Did you take an Uber? Did you, other than buses? I didn't do the, I didn't do the Uber. I, I knew the Uber is pretty new down there and it's been a lot of controversy between the Ubers and the taxis. And it didn't seem any different than what, you, you know, even when Uber first started um, in the U.S. and some of the major cities or taxi drivers weren't happy with it. Um, so I, I kind of, I like Uber. I've taken Uber in New York and London and other big cities, but uh, I didn't really see the need for it in Puerto Vallarta because I'd been there before and I knew the bus system a little bit and, and I knew how the taxis worked and, and you know, they're, they're fairly reasonable and uh you know the key thing is is agree on the price before you get in that taxi um but you know if you want to get around there you just ask a taxi um tell them where you want to go and uh, agree on a price and get in it and go what i did notice though is that the taxis were a little bit um uh more attentive um they automatically pull the seat up for you so they give you more leg room they turn the air conditioning on um you know, try to have some conversation with you. Um, not that they haven't before, because I've never had an issue with the taxi drivers. They've mm-hmm. always been great and friendly. But I didn't use the taxis a whole lot, mainly the bus and walking around. Um, we ended up one day walking around. We went to um, La Isla, the new mall. The new mall, yeah. Yeah, we wanted to take a look at it. And we, by the time we got there, it was, it was 1 o'clock, right in the middle of the heat. Ooh. And... Um, it was pretty hot, kind of dying. We were looking for somewhere cool. And, uh, of course, it's an outdoor mall, so there's not a lot of options here unless you want to go inside and shop or spend some money. Uh, but they, So we found the movie theater there, and that is awesome. I think there's a couple of them like it here in the U.S., but I've, I've never seen one quite like it um, where you can go in there and you can order food uh, You know, as you go in and your popcorn. They have five different flavors of popcorn, mm. chipotle flavor, um, butter, um, and uh, or drinks, you can order your drink, get your margarita or your or your Pacifico or your Coke, um, and they'll bring it to your seat once you're seated in the theater. Uh, but once nice. you're in the theater, it's got these really nice lounge chairs, kind of like the uh, home theater chairs you'd see at a furniture store mm-hmm. that lean back, and they got cup holders built in and little lamps next to you. And they even have the menu there with a call button, so you can order more or, or place an order. How cool is um, that? Theater seat. It, yeah, it's, it's so cool. And they lean back. So you, you just, and it's air conditioned. And so, you, you know, if you're looking for something to do in the middle of the day and you're a little hot in Puerto Vallarta, go see a movie. Right. Um, and okay. So was it in English? And, was it in subtitles? What was going on with the, what was going on with the film? Uh, well, we, we saw the new Spider-Man that came out and got to say, it's probably one of the better Spider-Man movies out. Um, but it's English with Spanish subtitles. Ah, okay, cool. So, okay. Yeah, so if you're working on your Spanish, it's a good way to work on it while you're watching a movie. Um, I think we were probably the only English speakers there. Um, you know, so I was surprised it wasn't in Spanish. But, uh, ah. yeah, it was good. So, yeah, if you're from, you know, North America 
and uh, you want to cool off in Puerto Vallarta, Puerto Vallarta and do something different, go to the mall and see a movie. That is a great idea. All right, so I'm going to sound like a broken record. How much? How many dollars? You know, I didn't really keep track on that. Um, all right, the popcorn all right. Popcorn was no, no, the popcorn was about half of what it is in the U.S. We ordered some sushi to at our seat. Um, that wasn't too bad. I think it was uh, like 190 pesos, something like that. Okay, so like um, uh, six bucks. Yeah, I, I think it was. Um, Two to three hundred pesos for the tickets. Okay. And I, I so about, so about fifteen this. bucks. About fifteen. Yeah. 15, yeah, yeah. So, so it's almost yeah, like not, it's like getting it's like at home. Yeah, not outrageous, but it's uh, the the theater's outrageously nice. Yeah. So it, it it really. Well, that, that's it, a good. It, it's a good uh, retreat from the heat. And, exactly. And it sounds like fun. So. And, they're, and the food that they're serving, is it Mexican fare? What kind of, what, what are they serving you? You know, it's kind of a variety. Um, I don't remember the full menu. Um, we, we keyed in on the sushi. Just surprised it was in a theater. Yeah. We the sushi. Right, it's, well, not the, it's not the greatest sushi. It's movie theater sushi. So you get to expect right. that. Yeah, and of course it's movie theater. Like, like all the movie theater sushi that I've ever had is that, I'm kidding. I mean, who eats movie theater sushi? There you go. You did. Yeah, did. we did. You know, they, they have nachos and and um, uh, full bar. Uh, let's see what else. Popcorn, you know, the five fla- different flavors of popcorn. And you can mix yeah. and match. Too. Or wow. mix them up in the same, same uh, one. So we right. kind of sat there and, and kind of uh, overindulged while we watched the movie. And why not? And, and why, why not? not? Yeah, cool. So see I didn't need a movie. taco yeah. this time. Usually I go down there and I, I love the tacos. But... Um, wasn't wasn't craving tacos this time. No. Oh. In fact, well, we got a taco truck actually right down the road from me here in Colorado Springs, and the the uh, guy that owns it's from Jalisco, and uh, he he makes tacos that are authentic. So truly yeah. Authentic. So you don't I'm, even, I'm like which. Yeah, you don't yeah, even, like, you don't have to try any, right? You go, you just you you got your 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 neighbor. You're there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I guess I got my taco fix, you know, here. Um, it, it wasn't craving them when I went down. I'm sure if I would have uh, seen a, a stand and hungry at the same time, I would have ordered, you know, ordered a half a dozen. But um, now yeah, we went out and ate some more. What else did we do? Yeah, where where um, else did you eat? Um, you know what I tried uh, for the first time, or I didn't expect I would in Puerto Vallarta, was uh, the local fast food, um, other than the stands. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we went to, uh, we're actually, there's a little church up there on the, um, hotel zone area up near the marina. We were going to go to their Wednesday night service, and we got there, and they were having some kind of a meal thing. And and we thought, now oh, okay, we'll just uh, go get ourselves something to eat. So we went across the street and found this place called El Pepe Loco, mm-hmm. and uh, it's, it's a it's a Mexican chain. I guess they're in Mexico City and and all over the place. And um, again, we we're more than pleasantly surprised uh, by you know the value which you get for the. Uh, the, f- the food quality for the price mm-hmm. was actually pretty good. I guess it was Sonoran style um, roasted or, or grilled chicken. Cool. So yeah, it was kind of fun going, going there. So, yeah. El Barracuda is the other place we we went to um, down on the beach um, on the again on the uh, North Hotel Zone. Yeah, and north, uh, north that's side. Uh, it's just it's uh, just north of uh, the actually the hotel Hotel Rosita just north of that. Yeah, yeah, just a few blocks north. Um, great place. I mean, great views on the beach. Uh, I love the way they do their menus. It's just on a big, big stand. They sit next to your table. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's great. There's uh, there's somebody in there complaining, and uh, I we were just I couldn't believe it. They go in there. It's a seafood restaurant. And they ordered the hamburger, and then they started complaining about it and saying, you know, complaining about the chef, and it's like you know. Why'd you order a hamburger at a seafood restaurant? But, um, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't eat a lot of seafood, but I ordered the uh, the fish platter, and it was just awesome. Um, again, I said everything I say out there is awesome. I, I love Puerto Vallarta and the food and everything. Um, but yeah, it was really good. Great views. I took a lot of pictures sitting there at El Barracuda and texting them to people saying, uh, "Here's where I'm at." Here I you. am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, remember, I can get you there. 
<laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, a lot of my clients, they like the, um, the all inclusives, um, and which is fine. Cause you know, a lot of them is just, like when I took my cruises, um, you're just, you're just trying to get away from work and get a good relaxing vacation. Yeah. But I try to encourage them to get out, you know, the, the resort a little bit and explore. And there's been some, uh, bad press about Mexico recently in the news that, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of weird because bad things happen everywhere. Right. But, Puerto Vallarta, I mean, if you want to get out, like, th- there's no worries. I tell them, you know, get out. You're not, you're not going to be have to worry about any of these things you see in the papers or hear about. Uh, yeah, agreed. It's, yeah. Um, you know, it's common sense that you need to use, of course, uh, when you're out at night. But uh, very friendly, uh, very, you know, I've always felt very safe there. But again, using common sense and, you know, not doing what you would not, do at home. It's like, I think that's, that's the main thing. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's a big city like any others and, you know, all cities have their issues, but um, yeah, I feel completely safe there. In fact, I feel more comfortable there than I do in Colorado Springs wandering around. Um, so yeah, get out and get out and, um, and, you know, out of the resort and kind of take a look at things and, mm-hmm. and uh, meet, meet the people and meet the culture. Yeah, absolutely. So, went to another place to eat was um, Serrano's right there at the Malacan, where it meets. Um, oh, what's a park? You just, I think um, you just did the podcast on the um, ceviche festival. It's gonna be oh, there. yeah, 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 yeah. Over yeah, yeah. on. So, uh, yeah, right there at the park. Lazaro uh, Cardenas park. park. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so it's a place called Serrano's. It's right there on the corner. Um, as the Malacan kind of opens up. To yeah. The yeah. I've never eaten and, there. I always walk past it. And you know who else liked it was uh, Alberto uh, Perez said that he liked oh, it too. Yeah. I thought, oh, okay. Cool. Well, I got to check that out. So you liked it, eh? Yeah. Well, you know, I've always walked by it before in my past visits and they always have the hawkers out there, you know, trying to bring you in, um, you know, try their steaks. And, yeah. And I just kind of walked by it and, you know, probably kind of touristy. But uh, on our last day, we just, we went in there for breakfast. And I had the chili carries and, and eggs, and uh, it was great. It was a great breakfast. Excellent. The orange juice was fantastic. Um, and the service was great. So, you know, I've been there for breakfast. I'd definitely next time probably try it for dinner. Yeah, me too. All right, that's a great that's a great tip for breakfast then. So, all right, that's Serrano's. Mm-hmm. Have you taken any? Any other tours, any um, other than the, that city bus tour that you took that first trip when you hit the, uh, you know, the yeah. deck running from your cruise? Yeah. Um, well, last time we went, we when we brought some friends out, we did the uh, Rhythms of the Night hmm. uh, tour. It takes you from the um, marina area out to Las Caletas, and they put on a big show um, with dinner, and the boat ride out there and back is a blast. Uh, the drinks are, you know, flowing. Um, what kind of a boat is it that they take you out on? It's like a large pontoon type boat. Okay. Um, if you've been out there, you've, you've seen them in the bay, but they're the large um, pontoon, almost like a small ferry type boat. Okay. Um, they take you out there, and then, you know, you're going out there, you get some uh, hors d'oeuvres, snacks for you, and drinks. And again, on that one, I asked for a Paloma. And uh, the server there, he, he again, he just laughs as I know what you mean. He <laughs> says, we're going to make you one. And he kept bringing them. Um, so he, he knew what I wanted. Yeah. Um, so he, we got out there and you get out there, you get off the boat and you go down this long, um, dark walkway uh, lit up by um, not tiki torches, but torches on with flames. Uh-huh. They have different um, people dressed up in, in, um, local costumes, um, Indian warriors, um, mermaids, and, you know, different sights to see. I, I think um, a giant plant guy walking around, hmm. uh, which I think I saw him on the Malacon too. <laughs> um, and, and just different things as you kind of walk you up and they guide you up to this uh, um, big outdoor amphitheater. And then they put on this great show, um, not quite like Cirque du Soleil. Some people have kind of compared it it's it's not like that at all but it's it's got fire dancers and it's putting on a show um uh uh, you know ancient mexico dancers and and different 
things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a great show out there. And then once the show's over, um, they take you out to another area and seat you for dinner for, a, um, again, another fantastic buffet dinner. Uh, Mexican specialties, fish, seafood, barbecue, um, the wine and wine and um, beer and drinks are flowing and uh, just really fill you up and then uh, put you back on the boat and take you back. And which the crew on the boat, that, that almost a highlight going back. Um, they just entertain you the, all the way back. Uh, they do little songs, dance skits. Um, really embarrassed my friend. He was, uh, him and uh, his his wife are fairly conservative, or he, he's more so. And they were doing some skit with uh, Queen songs, and the guy had a uh, mop head on his head for long hair, and then comes over and starts doing a lap dance at my friend, and he's kind of freaking out. So we got some good videos and pictures of that. So, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, you know, but, you know I, 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 if I weren't afraid that you'd get sued by your friend, I'd say, send it to me. I'll put it online. But no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. No, I might do that. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to have uh, so, um, how long was that tour? That one was blasted. You know, it's, it's fairly pricey, you know, for, uh, a lot of the tours and excursions you can do out there. I think it's like a one twelve a person. Okay. Um, somewhere in that range, I'm, don't hold me to it. And I know you can get some, uh, different buys. You can buy it on the cruise ship if you're on the cruise ship or you can buy it, uh, um, from the local tour out there. Mm-hmm. The, um, a lot of little Stands are popping up all over the place uh, offering the tour. Um, some are timeshare stands, some aren't. So you got to kind of right. navigate I think, those. I think you can go online and get it from JR at ViartaInfo.com, if I'm not perfect. mistaken. So perfect. And he'll, perfect. Make, and he'll make you a good deal on that too. Perfect. Yeah. So um, how, many, how many hours was that? You know, I'm going to have to say it's probably four hours. Okay. So that's a long, that's, that's good. That's a good. Yeah, that's a good uh, use of your time then. So you you, you yeah. enjoyed it, and the night, w- and obviously you're taking the night ride back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're getting a you're getting a, a boat ride, uh, w- which has got to say is very scenic. Um, you know, from the marina area out to Las Coletas, which is actually um, not an island. It's it's a it's a beach, um, but it can only be accessed by boat. Yep. So it's a very secluded, private, clean beach out there. Um, and then you, you coming back, you, you get an awesome view of the, the whole bay and the whole city lit up at night. Um, so you get the tour then you get the food, um, uh, which is, is good. So you, and you get the show. So you're getting a dinner show and a tour. Um, so really it's a great value. Yeah. It seems like it, it seems just like a great value to me. Anyway. Yeah. Um, all right, good. So that was rhythms of the night, you guys. Yeah, and then, um, you know, most I guess everything else we did is just kind of wandered around, check things out, um, going up and down um, the streets there. We haven't been to the Zona Romanica before. We've always been up at the North End in El Centro. And, uh, you know, like that, there's the um, uh, candy store up there, not too far from Hotel Rosita. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got these, I've, I've seen them in other stores now, these corn nuts. They're like, you know, like you get in California, the uh, corn nuts and get different flavors, barbecue flavor and plain. Um, but down there, I, I, I guess they make them with sweet corn. And so they, they got the sweetness to them. They're just mm-hmm. awesome. So I always grab three or four bags when I'm down there. And uh, I think it was, I uh, can't remember the name of the store. It's just down the street from the church, about one or two blocks. Well, I'll see if I can look it up and I'll yeah. put it on, I'll link it up at our website. But um, no, this was our first time really spending any amount of time on the south end. Um, now there's you get the pier down there, which is awesome. Lights up at night, and you can go up over the ocean. Kids are jumping off the side, and, you know, into the water. Yeah. And you get it, you know, again a great view out there. Great area just to walk up and, you know, get a view of the sights. But what was really surprising is how many shops and restaurants and um, areas are in that area. Um, my wife mentioned that. You know, last time we were down there, her and her friend went shopping um, down the streets there near Hotel Rosita, but said, you know, really need to come back and go shopping up and down the streets there in Zona Romanica. That's where a lot of the, the specialty stores are um, and some of the great restaurants. There's a lot more restaurants. Um, so if you're really looking for a lot of shopping opportunities and restaurants, that's a great area to stay. So we explored that area quite a bit. 
Um, there's that market up there behind the um, Pharma- Farmacia Gu- uh, Guadalajara. Uh-huh. And uh, you can go back out there, you can get fresh fruits, and uh, there's a whole bunch of um, little carts and stands of, of food you can buy and eat and right there. And, uh, you know, just wandered around. It was great. I think um, Fernando um, from Chinados, uh, I think he said he lived in that area. And, and yeah. Up in that well, actually, you know, his, he lives right there on, in, he lives in that restaurant. He lives upstairs. Yeah. Upstairs is his house. But yeah. It, yeah. It, well, his, I guess, evidently his um, family had bought an, uh, like an entire block over there, I think, when they, they, they sold the family home, which was closer down to where Cafe de Artistas is. And then um, the grandmother uh, bought this big area up there. So. Very interesting. Yeah, that, that that's yeah. a very interesting story up there. Yeah, yeah. After, after listening to your podcast, next time we go down there, I'd like to just hang out and chat with him some more. Yeah, he's a great um, guy. Nice man. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a ceviche festival coming up. I kind of wish I'd yeah. for that. Yeah, well, you know, you'll have to go back in January. They're doing it again. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of laughed. He said he was from uh, Tampico originally, and that's where um, – my wife's family lived years and years ago. Oh, okay. All right. In fact, uh, this is her grandmother, great grandmother, noted in the diary uh, when they met Pancho Villa. He rode into their uh, their farm and they gave him water. Fantastic. And off. Wow. It's kind of kind of cool story. It's just a few few uh, few lines in a diary, but it's kind of cool. Oh, that's so. very interesting. So your wife has got ties to Mexico, I hear. Yeah, yeah, kind of loosely. I guess the family lived there for uh, several years. All right. So, what uh, what are your plans? Uh, when are you when are you going to come back to Puerto Vallarta? You know, um, I would normally say December, but both my daughters are expecting about that time, uh, so I'm not sure if we can get out there again. But I, I definitely want to get out there uh, for some of the festivals and some of the things that go on in the in the high season again, uh, while it's a little cooler out there. Yeah, um, got a lot of things I, I'd still like to do. In fact, uh, you know, eventually I'd probably like to, you know, get a place to snowbird down there um, and come down on, on a regular basis a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I, I'd get down there next time and try some more new restaurants. There's the, um, I guess the Versailles neighborhood up by Costco. Mm-hmm. I haven't been up there yet. Um, well, they got some great yeah. restaurants up there too. That's that's what I've heard. I want to try to explore that area, um, take a look at. Been trying to get to the botanical gardens, just haven't been able to fit that in. Um, want to get in there and give that a try. I hear they're just awesome, gorgeous, great hikes, um, and good food even there. So, yeah. Oh yeah, um, the, yeah. The restaurant there is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Get out there and um, maybe give it to Adrian again and try to catch a fish. <laughs> um, I've been hearing about the mountains, um, San Sebastian. And some other places up there where it's cooler, and maybe that's a place to go uh, next time I go down there in the uh, the summer. Um, but here's some of the little towns in the mountains are just fantastic and, and uh, very scenic and some great food. And, um, yeah, maybe I can check those out. Yeah, in January actually, I'm going to have a I'll have a show about uh, San Sebastian. So yeah, have awesome. to check the you have to check that out. Neat. And you know. When I uh, first emailed you, um, when I emailed just to let you know I enjoyed your podcast, told you I was binge listening to them. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, it's, you know, get some of my references and, and some of the ideas of where I went in this last trip, you know, from your podcast. But um, I'd like to meet Gambino. I think that was his name. The, the Gabino, yes, Gabino, guy. yes. Yeah, it's um, he just sounded so cool. He's just a great story. I, next time I missed him, so next time I get down there, I'm going to, um, you know, introduce myself to oh, he's a great guy he's a great guy yeah and yalapa it's another place i want to go down there i, I hear a lot about that beautiful beach a couple of nice uh resort style hotels down there mm-hmm. and uh so yeah there's a lot more i want to do when i get down there and you know i want to meet some more people uh, maybe make some local connections you know make some friends down there some locals well, yeah and don't forget um, you can find jr on Tuesday evenings over at Por Favor's Saloon and, uh, what do they call it, in Cookhouse over there. He's there from 6.30 for usually a couple hours. 
And when the time changes, he'll be there at 5.30, usually for a couple hours. So if you want to pick his brain, you can always find JR there. Just buy him a drink and, uh, and ask away. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I like his website and a lot of the information. In fact, I printed out all the maps from his website uh, before I went down this time and found those pretty helpful to get me started. Yeah, um, you know, and some and mark down some of the places I wanted to check out or restaurants and and where they were at. So yeah, it's very useful. Website. Yeah, it's handy. It's pretty handy. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, Jeff, this has been great. It was really good of you to come and talk about your adventures in the summertime. So I want to give you an opportunity to tell everybody about your business. So tell us a little bit about Sun Sport Travel. Well, Sunsport Travel um, works to find value for vacations and adventures. We don't really look for the cheap. We try to find the best value and try to match up the experience you want with um, the vacation opportunities that are out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, We work with cruises, all-inclusive vacation packages, but we also do custom vacation plans and land tours um, worldwide. Uh, We also put together group trips, um, both on land and sea. A lot of people don't know you can actually have a group cruise Hmm. and uh, take your group on a cruise, which is very cost effective. Uh, You can find us online at sunsporttravel.com. We're also on Facebook at Sunsport Travel. And you can reach us by phone at 719-387-4804 or toll free at 855-718-1666. Or if you'd like, just send me an email at jeff at sunsporttravel.com. Um, right. As part of the Puerto Vallarta focus, I actually started a website called ViartaRocks.com, www.ViartaRocks.com. But I'm not sure how I want to market it or what I want to do with that. If anybody, listeners out there have an idea, let me know. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Well, we'll put that out for everybody. And I'll cool. put all that information out on uh, on my website. And I'll okay. put your info in links, too. So you guys look for look for Jeff's stuff. Uh, on my website at this uh, episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. Well, Jeff, I am so glad that you reached out and uh, sent me that email and told me that you were going to Puerto Vallarta in July, and I said, (laughs) you are the man we need to talk to. All right, so, all right, now as we come to a draw to a close here, would you go back in July? Yes, I would, and I'd bring more cotton. Um, you would bring more cotton? More cotton, more cotton shirts. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. so I would definitely come back in July um, or August or, or any time of the year just, just to get back. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd come back in July um, and, you know, just dress appropriately. Make sure, don't put on all your polyester down there. Um, wear your cotton and uh, – leave your, leave your polyester at home. Exactly, exactly. Bring your sandals and your flip-flops and uh, – and a hat and you'll be comfortable look like a tourist and you'll be good right on right on all right you guys you heard from jeff he just got back he would go back again in july and august and september you are a warrior my friend thank you very much (laughs) thank you very much for coming on the show with me i really really appreciate it jeff no problem i really appreciate uh, you having me and it's been great thank you all right so Let's review a couple of things that Jeff told us. First of all, don't be afraid to walk into a barber shop in Puerto Vallarta. It was a great experience for Jeff, and it's bound to be a great experience for you too. Next, remember to bring anti-itch cream along with your bug and mosquito repellent, just in case you get bitten and you don't want to run around looking for that. Uh, Use the buses. Don't be afraid to experiment. You can't go wrong. It costs like 50 cents to take a bus. Uh, try some local food. Try some local fast food if you, if you get a chance. You might be surprised. And if the summer heat gets too much to bear, duck into a movie at the brand new La Isla Mall. Nice. Well, that should do it for today. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the summer heat in Puerto Vallarta and the interview with Jeff from Sunsport Travel. I have pictures from Jeff of his adventures, so check them out in the show notes from this episode. 
number 31 of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. I also included the links to the places that Jeff talked about, so check those places out too. And next week, stay tuned for more on-the-ground reports from Puerto Vallarta and a cool interview from my friends in Puerto Vallarta as well. So until then, remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, then please reach out like Jeff did by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending us your message. And just a reminder to all of you that many of the tours that Jeff mentioned and the tours mentioned by many of my other guests like Rhythms of the Night, uh, Zipline Adventure at Canopy River... These, these tours can be reserved through my friend and yours, JR, at ViartaInfo.com. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to ViartaInfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour right through him, right from his website. Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition, my friends. His experience and his on-the-ground knowledge of everything in Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you would do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying, thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide. It costs no more than if you were going to be using someone else. So, really, just do it. And, and when you take one of those tours, email me, please, about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. And once again, if you like this podcast, please take the time and subscribe and give me a good review on iTunes if you would. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. So, thanks to you, Jeff Bassett, from Sunsport Travel, and Thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler, signing off with a wish for all of you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Yeah, yeah.